while coming this new video on the game engine, Sally. In this video, we're going to be talking about parallax background. So you probably have this um, experience while playing some games. You have this kind of scrolling background where we have many layers um, scrolling with a different ratio. So the word actually refers to that is the parallax. I don't even know where that word comes from, but it doesn't matter. Now in this video, we're going to be, I'm going to be showing you how you can actually add that into your engine. So because I already implemented that, you can see right here, I have, um, I think five layers. I have one for the clouds, as you can see right here. I have one for the sky behind, one for mountains. I also have one for these trees right here and another one for these in the front. And those are just kind of entities, trees that I can add. So whenever I run, you can see they are not kind of, they are not scrolling with the same ratio. So the object that we have in the front here will not scroll with the same ratio as object in the background because when you're driving with a car, for example, mountains that are far away, you know, are not moving with the same ratio as those trees that are just across of the road. And that's the idea about the parallax. So we kind of have this real world effect of things moving with, uh, with, with kind of realistic speed, so to say. And you can see right here, whenever I move, you see these trees are moving with the same ratio as the player and the map. But these right here have a different ratio and the idea is to be able to kind of play around with those ratio to give to to you the chance to be able to kind of modify that and change that according to your will and whatever you might want to get from that so that's basically what we're going to be doing in this video now if this is your first time watching videos on medical channel it's really important for me if you haven't subscribed now just hit that subscribe button in the description below before we start talking about this and i also want to mention that you are able to download the source code of this project right here on my patreon page you need to be a patreon for that but you will have all access and you also be able to kind of impact on the content i'm producing so i think it's a good idea to go and check that out but i I'm doing the best I can in this playlist to explain everything so that you guys can also learn from my experience. I wasn't a game de developer before I started this. I was just someone who liked to write some lines of code and I decided to build a game engine. And this is kind of, you know, something that I actually get out of that. So without spending your time, let's get started. Now, the first thing we want to do right now, the first thing I'm going to show you before we get started is what I actually change on the code because I don't want you to download the new version if you are a Patreon, for example, and then kind of see some things that I change and then you feel like I made something wrong. No, I kind of change some names, for example, game map, I change it to tile map. So that's just a name change. I haven't changed anything uh, in the code of that, just change the name. And the way you can do that is by just clicking if you want to do that because you don't have to. I decided to do it like that. So you just click right and you have this code refactoring and you say rename symbol and you can give the new name right here. And whenever you push on OK, it's going to be, you know, renaming this um, all over the code. So you won't have to go for each line of code that you've written with this variable and change that. That's really important. You can also use uh, control R I think so and with this you can also replace in the whole project files that's also another way of replacing the name of a variable and also remind you know to change the name remember to change the name of the file if you will so that's just something I just wanted to throw out in case you you kind of have a problem and one thing you want to make sure you do if you change the name is in your tile layer the name of this guy right here was, tie, was actually the name I'm using right now for the tile map. So the game map, the, the tile map name right here was the name that I used for this um, two dimensional array right here. So I changed this to tile matrix. It make, I think make more sense for me. 
at least for me so whatever just like that now that was just like an important aspect i wanted to point out before i start talking about parallax now for that for the parallax background all we need to create is an image uh, layer and for that you can see right here i have these two new files right here called image layer so i'm gonna invite you to just go and click and create a new class called image layer and you know save it in whatever folder you have in your case so in my case you know i have the map folder and i just put it there and my image layer is a little bit weird right now but it's it's working and uh, i'm getting everything i want from that and i'm i'm having some new ideas that i'm gonna be implementing on this like you know making things uh, so that um this layer will be able to determine itself it is gonna be you know kind of show the image more time and repeat the image if the size of the map is too huge then probably this layer is gonna be taking care of making the image fit the screen so some things like that i don't know if that even the way things would be done you know in 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 the reality i'm not like a gamer or someone who really deal with games i don't really play that much game i i am not but i'm just fascinated with this and i'm interested in writing code and that's all what is driving me right now so this is the class you can simply pause and write it if you need if you want to or if you're just checking because you want to see how i did this you can still watch now there are still variable right here that i haven't used right now like this one only this one i haven't used but oh, this is actually the variable which is the one i was actually trying to think about how i could use it to make the background be repeated i mean the image be repeated to fit the size of the screen now you can see we have our constructor which takes some important parameters the first one is the texture id so the image we want to draw on the screen we want to have the texture id of that since we already have a texture manager we don't have to you know somehow load the image here and deal with everything in that so we just want to have the id of that the texture manager is going to be taking care of loading that image for us and we won't have to change anything about that so and um yeah the position where we want this image to be you know where we want this image to be uh, printed on the screen the scroll ratio this is actually how we want this to move according to the camera because everything you're seeing on the screen right here is drawn according to the camera so everything right here whenever i move everything is drawn according to the camera so if i want to have a different ratio with the camera i have this variable which has a value between one and zero i should actually make sure i put that in that area so that whenever someone gives something more than i always cast it down but no the value the value is between zero and one and i just multiply the position of that camera uh, i did that in the texture manager i think i already talked about that just want to show that in case i haven't but i think i did so right here in the draw function you can see i just call my camera and i get the position of that and you can see i multiply this by the speed ratio which is like the scroll ratio whatever you might want to call it and i just multiply it by the scroll ratio and this will actually determine the normal value that i want for the camera to the value that i want for the position of the current texture i want to draw on the screen and that's why the destination rectangle is going to be you know i'm going to be taking the part of the camera out of that to be able to you know put it on the screen the way it should be so this is just like a translation so to say and that's the idea about this so we have this scroll ratio we have the scaler we want to scale up or scale down the image in this case right here I, I, i've been scaling images i'm coming to that because those images was were pretty small and if i had to deal with that with the original size then i'll have to print this on the screen at least in time to reach this size so that's why it's also important to scale up or down and the guy who take care of that is this texture manager you can see right here in the destination rectangle we simply multiply the width and the height by the scale that we've given that's the whole idea about this 
can see right here we have the scale given and that's it you can even rotate if you want but that's just something we don't need right now so that was the constructor and we have this set scroll ratio those are just setter there's nothing so important about this setter are just setter there's nothing to explain but we have this query image i could have said query texture whatever this is important because if you see right here we have image width and image height we somehow want to get this information without having to write this ourselves because it will be pretty annoying every time to give the size of each of each image we want to load and uh, i think i'm going to be also working on this texture manager to make that also um you know possible that whenever we load an image we query that image and simply take the information about that image width and height we're gonna probably create a texture structure which has all information about the image like the texture the width and the height the format the source the path and we'll simply use that instead of just creating our map with the texture as we did right here right here we're gonna be creating that with our own structure of texture and then we'll be able to access information about images and use them for you know all kind of purpose we might want to do you know that's that's very important so and uh, if i switch over to my cpp file so you can see the constructor is straightforward i just kind of set the values of my member variables and uh, the query image is simple i just want to get the size the height and the width of that image so there is nothing that i've done here i just call the sdl query texture and uh, i get the texture from the texture manager so i created this new class this new uh, method instead um called get get texture and uh, if i go to my texture manager right here you can see that method right here all it does is it takes the id of the texture i want to kind of get from my map and I just give that texture to my map and it's gonna return that texture for me and I can get access on that and use that for any kind of purpose I have on my engine. Now, if I go back to my CPP file, you see I just query this and I call that query image right here to be able to get the information about that. And as I said, I think I'm gonna be doing this in the game, in the texture manager so that I will be able to do this without having to call this function right here for all texture that i load i want to query and get all information about them and then i'll be able to get uh, do something out of that now how to use this we already have this created how to use this if i go to my um play state so if, if you don't actually know what i'm talking about this play state and stuff i have videos about that there is a there is a the, the link in the description below you can go and check that out I created a state for you know for our game and don't want to talk that much about that now this is how i can create a parallax so i just went and i created this variable right here i'm actually thinking to make this a little bit better by not writing that much you see right here i have all these that's too much for me i don't want this so I want to do this, I already have some good idea about this, I want to do this so that everything will be automated so I don't have to write this myself because right now if I want to change something, if I want to change for example the position of the cloud, I will have to change this and recompile the code and I don't want that, I don't want to be recompiling the code because I changed just a number, That's, that doesn't make any sense at all. But for now, we just kind of stick with this because i just wanted to show you that this is possible and easy to do now i create this variable this vector which can take image layers so we have this map right here which is our normal map that you know from all our videos that we, we started creating maps so we only have this part right here and uh, we also have this image layer right here and we just kind of push some image layers in there and you see i just gave the id of my images and if you have been following along you know that my images are you know in this xml file right here i just have to specify the id of the image and the path of that image relative to the project folder that's in point because you can also put absolute path that's that, that's not a big deal and you see just give this and 
I'm able to load this with my program and use this. So the idea was just to avoid me every time writing to load images because I want to write less code as possible. So that's my target. So and then I just kind of you know load the sky, uh, mountain, cloud, and all these things right here as you can see. And I just come down here. This was just for trees. I'm coming to that in a couple of seconds. And I would just come down and say parallax. Where is the weird guy? Where is right here? Yeah. And I just use this loop right here to you know render all of our parallax. I didn't mention something. The image layer also inherit from layer because it's a layer. So that's why this is important. I didn't mention this. And that's why it has this render and this update function. And uh, I just kind of use that to render and I didn't talk about my render function either so let me go back to the CPP file I just call my texture draw function there is nothing that I can explain here I can set the angle and say 30 and if I compile this you will see um, all images are gonna be you know this is also something I, I like it it looks so great man I can create some kind of I stop with this yeah okay I don't want to mess up with that so and this is the result actually as you can see on the screen everything is looking just fine and uh, we don't have to do anything and everything is handled properly scrolling the speed of each tile is and I really like the way it works because hey it's keep working I stop what's wrong with this guy I'm not even pushing the key okay I don't know whatever so yeah and uh, let me go back to my play state I'm showing too much things don't worry you can still get the source code in the description below so if you have any question or concern just write me down and I will kind of answer that at least if I can so I can so that's normally it this one right here as you can see is just I just wanted to put some trees because I wanted to have some colors in the front right here that's why I just use that but the idea is to create also a file like this where I'll be able to pass all those entities and just throw them on the screen without having to write any line of code that's something I really want to do and uh, you know if you remember if you have been following along we also created factory object factory we're also gonna be creating things like I don't know layers factory or entity factories I don't know but this is just a journey I started and I hope this is gonna be interesting and um, yeah I've been talking too much and um, I hope I haven't you know forgotten anything and yeah so thank you guys for watching videos on Mexico channel and uh, as I said you can still leave me a comment in the description below if you don't like this at all let me know but if you do like it don't leave without pushing that like button and if you haven't subscribed I beg you to do that right now because I really need your support and if you guys can go out and support my work on patreon that will also mean a lot to me and uh, I really appreciate you guys watching my videos and leave a nice comment so see you in the next video ciao